Uh, I feel right at home in here. Huh. Wait, what are we floating on? It's like we're in space, you know? Huh. Well, let's check out this world. Ah, rest and sleep. What a nice place to chill out in, am I right? They got this nice room over here. Yeah, but we're still in space, you know? Oh, look, guys. We're like in homebox here. But we're also in space. But look, guys, I can explain, man. You know the thing about home? Ah, we're at the fifth street, you know? I'm really getting the blender vibes here. It's a great bar to hang out in. You even got some outside place here. But you're like kinda in space still. Yeah. Gotta call you out on this, Spooky. Now, this is the VR shit hub, the final frontier. They even put like a toll of ease over there, you know? Good stuff, you know? Appreciate the VR shit. Yeah. But we're still in space here, huh? Yeah, hello. Today I will show you how you can add substance to your vault by baking a terrain into your skybox and having a small 3D terrain around your vault as well. It's a very simple process and we are here in a chill mountain you can hang out in, preferably in VR. I tell you, this name keeps on giving and it's located on top of a larger mountain with like a mountain range surrounding it and it kind of really gives you a nice feel to it. And as you can see, this terrain is quite large, right? but it's actually two parts. You got like the 3D terrain, you know, it's like four square kilometers and then there's like a terrain which is baked into the skybox itself and I'm gonna show you the process I've I've used. You can do this with any kind of terrain you like, even like Unity terrain or like some asset or whatever. I've used a tutorial which I linked down below which allows you to make a terrain uh, just using simple modifiers in Blender itself. And you know, in Blender you can like generate these textures and whatever to make a terrain. But yeah, uh, you'll find that in the tutorial down below. Either way, let me show you my setup on Blender first. So here we are in Blender. I already like finished up the terrain, of course. It's like a huge mountain range. If you like zoom out, you'll see it's like 16 square kilometers of, of mountains and shit. Really nice stuff. Uh, of course, you would cut out like part of this terrain to be like your 3D terrain part if you wish to do this. So like something like this, right? And of course, uh, if you're like here where your map is be should be, this is like an earlier version of the world I'm working on, of course. Uh, you'll see and then you look out and you're like, you know, some of these mountains super far away are not gonna affect how it's gonna look on the skybox anyway. So you can cut away most of this terrain. So let's just do this. Here we go. Let's just take this and then control I and then just delete the stuff. I hope you're gonna be more precise when you do this, but just to demonstrate it, of course. And then we do like a test viewing if it all looks fine. And I'm like, yep, that kind of looks like a nice terrain. I wanna bake this now. And here we are, I already prepared something. I increased the subdivisions, you know, on the modifier thingy. And I also made it somewhat of a circle right here, you know. It's just so I can save some, some averts, you know. You don't need to import like a super huge terrain for this to look super nice. Since this is a mountain range and I also got the 3D component for my terrain, I also made like the center part flat for this thing, you know, just so it blends, so just so the 3D part and the 2D part later are gonna blend together quite well. So yeah, we take this, you know, this is in a separate blend, separate blend file, of course, and for baking the skybox, I would strongly recommend you also make a separate Unity file, like a, uni a separate Unity project, of course. And yeah, here we are, I imported the terrain right here. It has like the texture going on. That's also what the tutorial link below shows you, by the way. And yeah, we still need to do a few steps, right? So if you baked your light, which I really hope you do, cause baking light is good optimization technique, guys, you know, uh, then make sure you also bake the terrain right here. On bakery, you know, you can go to like render light map. It also works with the Unity light map, of course. And then I set the texts to unit to like something super low, you know, it's like one texel per unit, you know, it's like, it doesn't need to be like a huge bake. It doesn't need to be like a huge uh, long bake. You know, this took me like, don't know, five minutes to bake and bake with. So yeah, just so it's like consistent with the bake of your main project. Speaking of which, the lighting options need to be consistent with the ones on your main project as well. You know, sun direction, 
you know, like, you know, directional sunlight color or whatever settings you have on your main main board, of course. And yeah, we need to bake a reflection probe as well. As you can see in the here here, I got two reflection probe and one reflection probe is just to make sure that the terrain is getting the proper reflections from the skybox itself. So we got this reflection probe. You can set it to like any resolution you like. You know, I went a bit overkill and set it to 2K, you know, just for the reflection probe for the terrain, but it would work the same with 128 probably. So yeah, just making sure you bake this, uh, set the culling mask to nothing. So it only reflects the skybox, you know, not the terrain yet. Then we'll come in the next step. Then you go to lighting, set the cube map to the reflection probe you just, you know, created. And then the terrain should be having the proper reflections already. So yeah, now you've set it all up, right? It just looks just like the lighting in your main project. Uh, you can do like the rear game. Now this is the, re this is the rear game, guys. So we got a reflection probe, which is only responsible for baking you your, your skybox. So you got the skybox, right, which is usually pretty empty, and you got the 3D terrain going on. This reflection probe should be around the same height as the height you set in your main project, you know, for your vault spawn, okay, or like where the main area is or whatever, right? So keep this in mind. So I spawn pretty high, right? And in my most recent vault, it's like at 128. It's like high up because you're on a mountain, right? So I've set the cube map up here and I set it to a resolution of 1024. I found this to be the best balance between quality, you know, like resolution and stuff and file size. You could do two, uh, 2048, but then you have like a 32 megabyte reflection probe. It's a bit overkill, you know. But yeah, that's the best solution I found. You click bake, of course, and then you locate this particular reflection probe uh, in your in your project files and then you drag it into your main project of course and this is the whole process really it's kind of kind of simple and it's really gonna help uh, kind of give your vault a bit of substance and this is the whole process of course then you go to like your skybox material um, the shader is called skybox cube map right and then you just select the cube map the good part is you know if you go to lighting you can also set the bake cube map as uh, the environment reflections cube map, you know, set it to custom and then put the same thing in here. And now you got the skybox and the cube map at the same time, boom, it's just like two in one deal right here. Uh, you know, getting the optimization in as, as you're probably used <laughs> to from me by now. Either way, I hope this will help you kind of escape the harshness of space and perhaps find a nice planet to put your next board in. Either way, thanks for watching and goodbye.